Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for some more Overwatch here at the start of Stage 3. I'm Achilles back on the cast with Wolf. Three weeks is too long. I have missed this place. I have missed casting some Overwatch, so I'm excited to dive back in. How about yourself? I'm feeling excited about it, too. You know, we're past the halfway mark now. Everything really matters here. There's no more second chances. Every single series you lose, if you're at the bottom of the standings right now, is one step towards not being in the season playoffs. Yeah, and for Seoul right now, they're half and half. They have that 7-7 seven, seven record missed out on the playoffs in stage two after finding their first one in stage one. So a bit of a disappointing run for them in the second stage. We'll see if they can try to work their way back in. Down at the bottom though, their opponent is the Florida Mayhem. Have been undergoing some difficulties. But first, we'll go ahead and take a look at the Dynasty. The Dynasty have had, you know, a fairly rocky season. They made their first playoffs in stage one, just barely missed it in stage two, having some uncharacteristic losses there right at the end and it's time for them to bounce back. They're still very much in the running for making it to the season playoffs, which they were unable to do last year as well. And certainly things are looking up for them right now compared to where they were at the end of the previous season and the start of stage one. Yeah, and coming into this stage, we know that Soul Dynasty has some additional players ready to go. Highly, they tweeted out just a little bit ago, will be starting over Yu Jae Hong. Fisher back in the starting lineup as well over Marvel. So changing it up a little bit, we'll see if that experimentation is gonna result in a victory here for the Soul Dynasty because their opponents, Florida, despite their record, have also changed things up a bit. Yeah, they've been adding a lot more Koreans to their roster. If you take a look at their stage three cha changes coming through, you can see Tavik apply and ST all taken out of the roster. McGravy's traded and you brought Fate from the Valiant and Byram, who's actually a contenders player who's also Korean, comes in from free agency. We'll see if Fate ends up being a big upgrade over Swan, who's one of the weak links, most would say, for Florida Mayhem right now. Yeah, I mean, Fate was a little bit hot and cold when he was over on the LA Valiant. Certainly had some moments that looked, uh, you know, very big brain, then had some other ones where you weren't quite sure what he was going for in that moment, but maybe over onto a fully Korean-speaking roster, he might be able to find some success. Only time will tell, but with Fisher back in, you can expect a lot of aggression up in that front line that he's going to have to deal with. So let's go ahead and see if they can do it as we bring him out. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Florida Mayhem. Rocking the colors everyone's been waiting for, the pink with the neon blue, their alternate jerseys, looking to start the second half of the season off right. A lot of adjust adjustments and, you know, Scott Tester, Bearhands, he's been saying this is just the beginning. They want to keep adding more Korean players. They want to keep investing and looking at all contenders regions to improve this team. And it's not yet too late for Florida Mayhem to turn this season around, but it's a very uphill battle. We will see not only Fate starting on our starting six today, but also Byram coming from NRG. He's going to be coming in to fill the shoes here of Hagopun on flex support. Yeah, so changing things up a bit here. Let's see if that's going to be enough for Florida to go ahead and get a victory. As their opponents, the 7-7 seven seven record, they still have looked much better in this season. Let's bring them out. It's the Soul Dynasty. Reppin' 82, I'm in Soul City. Riding down the streets, got my homies with me. Soul's name, the dynasty, it comes from where they started, back as the legends that were known as Lunatic High, and that those players, most of them are gone, and Jaylong won't even be on the starting roster here as we head into the second half of the season. Fisher is back, and we've got Hailey coming in. Hailey was on some of the weaker teams in Contenders Korea, his background in WGS and O2 is nowhere near Jaehong's background and successful history. To see him start today is a huge progression of his own career and how much he's grown as a player. He's now in the Overwatch League, taking this place of one of the most famous flex supports in the history of Overwatch. So big shoes to fill here. And with an upgraded Mayhem year, Soul Dynasty better make sure they can keep their cool as we head into these first few maps. And we do have Fate on stage for the first time alongside the Florida Mayhem, looking to deliver them their second match win of the season, replacing Swan. A lot of people pointing fingers at him, saying they're one of the weaker main tanks in the league. Taking a look at their stats side by side, though, some pretty close numbers. Yeah, and that's the thing about Fate is he's a stronger main tank overall, most would argue, but he's also played on one of the other weaker rosters in the Overwatch League. Didn't have the greatest World Cup showing, most would argue individually, all for Team Korea, even though they took the whole thing, as they always do. <laughs> uh, we'll see what happens this year. But anyways, 
Uh, this is considered by most to be a big upgrade. Let's see if on paper with the eye test, though, we can actually see that happen. And let's see where we're headed here with our map set presented by Toyota. Oasis going to start us off followed up by Paris, then Hollywood, and then Havana to round things out potentially on Escort, unless we can get to another map five. Already have had one electrifying series. Let's see if this one delivers yet again. That we will. Excited to see how these newer players perform too on the, you know, the very beginning of a new stage, the second half of the Overwatch League, in front of a large crowd like this. A lot of pressure on Byram and Hailey in particular coming from the contender seed. See what they've got now that they're up here on the big stage, pushing out as we start things off on University. Fast to the point are the Florida Mayhem. Chris already gonna be taken down though. Highly, he kicks things off with a bang. Explodes forward and manages to get the first kill here in his first game on stage. Now Zephyr gonna be popped out of the mech in Soul Dynasty. Looks like they will be able to go ahead and lock down this first point with relative ease. Highly is known for his aggressive positioning, his ability to peek corners and get right click kills early. Not always known for his transcendence timing. See in you know, one of his old partners in Prime Lastro played very similar styles in Korea, looking for frags, not really thinking about, you know, how to get the most out of healing, trying to get kills instead. It's a very popular style of Zenyatta in this meta, which is why it suits him. Getting that opening kill makes them get a free first take. You see him here as well, looking for those pokes around the corner. Yep, building up, nearly has that transcendence ready to go. Fisher not able to get too much as far as that Earth Shatter is concerned. He and Bate gonna be on a similar level here at the moment. Rally's gonna be coming through from Fleta. Keeping everybody safe as they play far forward here at that choke. And Florida Mayhem go ahead, they draw themselves back, sound the retreat. Now they're not gonna find a fight win there. Not gonna happen right away. Chris trying to look for a boot from above to split this team in half, but Dynasty is pulling back very smartly. Aggression coming through. Fisher gonna be stunned up for the moment. Manages to stay alive. Highly popping the transcendence. Keeps that main tank topped up. BQB, high energy, has the grab ready to go. Trying to track down Michelle. Responds in with a grab of his own, but Bate all on his lonesome will be taken down. The bomb out, not gonna be able to find anything. But Michelle makes it back into the mech safely. Florida again start peeling their way back. 60% on the board for the dynasty. The transcendence there from Highly looked suspect at first, but they wanted to force a bad engagement out of the mayhem. They were able to trade transcendence. And when the grab came through, they already had positional advantage, so weren't able to capitalize. And all ultimates matched here. This is amazing for Dynasty, who still hold the defensive advantage here. And if they hit 99, they could just hold ults as well. They could just delay here. Yeah, barrier getting ready to come up for Chris. Toby's been hanging on to his for quite some time. She's dropping low, just kites in around the corner, keeping himself safe at the moment. Shadow gonna be coming down, goes straight into the shield. So Fink. It will block that one out, maybe. A fighting chance on the Florida Mayhem to get this flip here just before we hit 99%. Still keeping this one contested. Fisher gonna be taken down the beach just a second too late. Managed just to find that main tank. Florida responding with one of their own. The flip getting ready to come through. Toby gonna be taken down. The delay ends there. Florida Mayhem now on the board. And you could forgive the sound barrier here for Toby because if he had hit it a split second earlier, they might have just won the first round. Chris had to trade to match and they still hold all of their ultimates otherwise here, so they can crash onto this point a few times and force the Mayhem to use their ultimates defensively. They come in with an advantage. All they need to do is win one fight to win this round. Yep, from there, even a miracle wouldn't really save Florida. Trying to flip it back. Poking out, Fitz building up that energy. They get 70 now. Rally's gonna be coming through from Fleta. Zaya just a couple percent away from having one of his own. Online now, pops set one, just about instantly. Grab comes in, manages to find Fitz and Hailey over onto the side. The Transcend is coming through from the Zenyatta, try to stay alive. Fate going lower and lower here into the front line. Takes a fire strike, but they barely keep alive as Byram pops a Transcendence. Coming back in, Fleta gonna be taken down as Florida Mayhem do not go down without a fight. They maintain control, now going up past 50%. Hailey's Transcendence protected them against the Graviton Surge and also the Flanking Diva coming through from Zephyr. But it wasn't enough to win them out the longer fight. Byram's Transcendence a little bit later, and then they got that extra healing to stick through the fight, get the first kills. But now that they don't have the Transcendence and Fitz comes back with the Graviton Surge, and Toby in the longer fight should be able to build a barrier, this is the hardest fight the Mayhem will have to win to take this first round. Pushing forward, Grab Bomb. Ready to go, support ultimates. Going behind just a little bit here for the Dynasty, but still ahead of Mayhem. So they're trying to close this one out. 
Wayne back in. Fisher leading the charge. Gets that bubble to try to stay alive. Poop over onto the side. They try to find bait. That Matrix comes up, but now that it's used, Bomb comes out. Grab manages to catch him. That's going to be two kills scooped up for Fitz. Another two for Michelle. Make it a triple. And Zephyr gets knocked out of the mech on the back end. And Soul Dynasty will be able to take it 192 in our first round of Oasis. They knew the barrier was about to be broken. There was no way Fate could keep holding the shield. So placing the grab in that location forced the reactionary self-destruct to come out from Zephyr. You see the follow-up come from Michelle. He plays the self-destruct behind. There's no way the barrier is gonna hold. It's an easy one fight. They had the better ult economy because they held onto their ultimates as long as possible, especially that Graviton from Fitz. They knew that if they could just get it to 99, use their ultimates conservatively, and barring a huge mistake, they should be able to flip it there in the end. And now, it looks like we might see a little bit more BQB Sombra, you know, his most famous hero back in his contender's career, but a little bit so-so here in the Overwatch League yeah. on that hero, but right now it's all the rage outside of Overwatch League to run what people call Sombra Goats, which is Reinhardt Zarya compositions with Sombra rather than D.Va. See if this works out for the Mayhem. It's one of BQB's most famous heroes. Well, for now, up onto the high ground are the Soul Dynasty Fisher gonna be operating on the Winston as opposed to the Reinhardt. See if he'll be able to stick through with that one the entire time, or if he's gonna be feeling that pressure to swap over to try to match in that Ryan B Ryan battle. BQB is gonna be jumping back, building up to about 40% of that EMP so far. Perfect pull number coming in as Fisher drops the bubble, goes in for a bit of a leap, trying to harass and build up for that primal rage. About halfway there. Not too much damage coming out from either side. Aside from these Zenyatas. Fireman highly trying to race to the top to get those transcendences online. Fireman under some pressure will be taken down. Fleta hounds him out, manages to find the kill on that whip shot. Goes straight to the side player's face. Double kill over to Fleta. He'll get pinned. Eliminated by Fate, but I don't think they're gonna be able to turn this one around. Fate all off by himself will be eliminated. Fisher has the primal now, but it's gonna be so difficult to use it. And that was the entire game plan, you know, for this Winston pick that they got out early. But they, the thing is, if you get the charge up, if you get the primal rage, then you have another tool to delay. You could swap to the Reinhardt later. This ultimate is one of the least impactful ultimates when you're on a point like this where there's not really a whole lot of environmental kill potential. Let's see what they can get done with this, because that's really going to be the determining factor on how much percent they can gain here as Florida Mayhem is right in tow with them on ultimates, and the EMP is going to be their initiation. Well, maybe you can just go ahead and try to force out a Transcendence from Byron, missing nearly has it online. Juggle him into a corner. Fisher, though, jumping up into the front, will be hacked up by the EMP, but they're managing to keep him alive, and Flutter picks off Byram before that Transcendence can come through. Zephyr now going to be taken down. Soul Dynasty looking fairly casual here as they maintain control of the point. 55% moving up. Look at the close out of Oasis with the 2-0. Fisher doesn't end up needing to use the Primal, and during the EMP, they found an isolated target Byram. He didn't have Transcendence. They killed him turned the fight into a 6v5, used nothing but their own Transcendence and the Rally to easily buildable ultimates. The big ultimates they're holding are gonna be enough to bring this to 99 at worst case scenario for the Soul Dynasty. They may just simply try to delay without ults and come back for this flop. Let's see what the game plan's gonna be. Flutter just holding up that shield, giving that third person perspective, trying to spot them out, man. Just to find BQB, loops him back. Not gonna have too much accuracy from that distance, so can't build up too much for the EMP yet. Still just sitting at 30% away, so can get that in an extended fight. Primal Rage gonna be used by Fisher. Grab coming out from Zephyr. Not gonna find anything. Stack All by itself too. right there on the ground. Now the responding crab coming through from Fitz. Manages to find pretty much the entire team. Bomb's not gonna be able to get anything, but the cleanup kills are still gonna be there. Soul Dynasty wiping the floor with the Florida Mayhem. They will be able to close out Oasis. One up in the series. Crushing victory for them there. Everyone's caught in the same point. Fisher does the majority of the damage as he leaps through. You know, a lesson on how to use your ultimates conservatively when you get that first point. Soul Dynasty keeping their economy ahead. Step by step, not easy to do against the Sombra. 1-0 start here for Soul. Let's see if they can keep it going. Or Florida Mayhem bounces back when we come back for Paris. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League.
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Highly kicking things off with a bang. His first match there on the stage got the first kill of the series, and he's looking pretty darn good on that Zenyatta. He is, and this is another look for Soul Dynasty. We've seen so many different players slotted into what is a very large roster overall. So that Jexay? Yeah, I mean, we've still got Jexay on the lineup. You've had, you know, Marvel and Fisher trading places. Now you've got Hylian, who's a rookie, coming in for Jayhong. I mean, there's a lot to talk about here. Soul is making so many different rosters work. It's unbelievable. No one else is really making this happen right now. And Fleta back in for the first time in God knows how long. I'm not quite sure how long it's been it uh, makes since sense. he's been starting. But yeah, I mean, looking good so far. So seems like they will just go ahead and carry on with the same rosters. We move in to map number two, Paris, for Assault. So no changes on either side. Fleta's Zarya overall was a bit weaker than some of the, you know, Zarya level of play we've seen from a lot of the other full Korean rosters. And he was replaced by Fitz eventually once Fitz got some of his nerve issues under control. And now he's back on the Brigida, which is a, you know, role that a lot of projectile DPS players play. And Fleta has always been most famous for his projectile DPS in the past. So I feel like this suits him very well. We'll see if it ends up being what they decide to go with in the long term because you know, Soul certainly has a lot of different rosters and six mans they can bring through. What are they doing? Here they go on the attack. Fisher going to be starting on the Wrecking Ball, likely a scouting mission. Yeah, none of that. Roll back over into the spawn. Let's, uh, let's change it up a little bit. Back over onto that Reinhardt. Just want to make sure it's not a bunker composition. Verify that it is the Reinhardt Saria 3-3 variation before committing. Don't want to give up too much ult charge by just crashing through the mismatched composition. Faint playing very aggressively far forward. Has that leap. Take himself out to safety should he need to. But now just going to be zapping away. Gets that armor pack still down below half HP. Rejoins on the high ground. Just trying to amp it up. He gets knocked over onto the low ground, and that's enough time for BQB to get scooped up. Managed to find one pick, Soul Dynasty. Can they just go ahead and snowball in off this? It seems like they can. Three kills over to them as they work their way over towards point A. Michelle just going to be pushing forward, looking to finish off the Lucio. Toby getting in the action as well. We'll be able to find the killing blow. And A goes the way of Soul Dynasty, who are going to have an absolutely monstrous time bank here for that point B take. And when I was talking about the scout earlier, I misspoke and said Reinhardt, sorry, it was the Winston, which is more common on defense, right? And they, they verified that. Fate didn't get much done compared to what he would have liked to. Normally, you get the shield from BQB, the bubble, and you do a ton of damage, a BQB builds charge. He died so early in the fight, BQB is at half the charge of Fitz right now. This could be a double cap if Florida loses anyone in the beginning of this first attack because then the grab's gonna come up for Fitz and it's a disaster. All goes back to Chris getting knocked onto that low ground. There's no healing coming out for the Lucio. There's any Ana unable to do anything in an AoE situation without that transcendence online. Still 22% away from that. Trying to see Rapple around that right hand side. Start working their way over onto the point. Ultimates a plenty. A shatter nearly up for Fisher. They go ahead, they see exactly where Zephyr is. Prime position here for Fitz to use that Graviton Surge. He wants to hold on to it. Lobs it straight in behind the Rhine Shield. Catches him, the Transcendence comes in from Byron, but Crystal gonna be taken down. Highly managed to buy the kill, despite the healing output of the enemy Zenyatta. Now the Shatter going through. Fisher not gonna be able to knock anybody to the ground, but he's still chasing forward. Bloodthirsty, finding some kills. Grabbed off the point here for the moment, but one tick already snagged with 540 remaining on the clock for Soul Dynasty. Might just be able to have it right here, right now. Can anyone tag in? Side player gonna be dropping down. Dashes off the point for just a moment. The beat comes in. Bomb up over the top. Zephyr looking for a pick, but he's not gonna be able to find anything. Now Sia player is gonna be taken down. Fire him, joining him in the grave. Soul Dynasty looking poised to take this with about five minutes, Michelle. A cheeky little diva 1v1, but while that was going on, Soul Dynasty, they get the cap. Lots of shield blocking there on the transcendence from Byram as well when the grab came through. They had too much of an ult advantage. This is how 2CP is played in this meta. You get A on the first fight, you're gonna have that ult advantage. Use it correctly, block that trans healing, and you've got a great time bank. 525 is a great time bank. Let's see if Florida Mayhem can beat it when we come back for their half. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League.
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, Soul Dynasty with a pretty monstrous attack here on Paris. Finished with 525 remaining in the time bank, but now it's time for Florida Mayhem to go on the offensive and try to best that. Yeah, you know, as I was saying, assault maps are kind of like this, so it's not unreasonable to expect that if Florida have a good attack on A, they could just do the same thing. It seems daunting at first glance when you look at a time bank like that, but it is certainly repeatable if the Florida Mayhem have a successful attack here. If you then take a look at the last fight here of the self-destruct coming through, you do see that there is a bit of a step off of the point here for the Florida Mayhem. Yeah, boops him off, and just right there at the end. The student fist trying to retreat quickly enough there. BKB was trying, but just a little bit too late. I mean, know those seconds really do matter. Even a fraction of one can cost you dearly. And if you if you do delay for two, three more seconds, you might be able to buy 30 more seconds or 40 more seconds with respawns coming through. So it does end up costing them a lot, but they're focused now on matching the time bank. We will see Fate start with this Wrecking Ball to yep. scout out the setup. It's Fisher on the Rhine, by the way. We'll also be seeing at halftime, Scott Tester, bare hands. GM of Mayhem will be joining those guys down there on the floor talking about the recent additions to the team. Yeah, that's going to be great to see. Fisher on the Rhine here, though. You know, we talked about the variations there between the Rhine and the Winston, and it didn't work out previously for Fate on the Winston on the defense. He got killed early, and BQB was cut off. Well, you have to play a lot more passively, though, as you can see Soul is right now, behind sight lines. Or behind shields. Boop there, onto the low ground. He's gonna be rolling through his fate, trying to disrupt Soul Dynasty. So far, not leading to any kills. A lot of damage on to Michelle, though. That's gonna be him knocked out of the mech, Sia player. Managing the fine, a minor victory here for the Florida Mayhem as they continue to advance over towards the point. Good for Fitz, unable to find him. Fate going lower and lower, manages to stay alive for a little bit longer. Zephyr, in the meantime, trying to keep the rest of the team contained inside this building by constantly applying pressure from above with these rockets. So, it's such a good composition versus what Soul's running. Which are going lower and lower. Can't quite break that shield down fast enough to get the kill. Fleta, up by himself, is going to get picked. Shell goes forward, will get knocked out of the mech, but side player and Zephyr both going to be taken down. So, the crux of the damage has been eliminated. That was the catalyst for the hold for Soul Dynasty, was the wraparound. The attention was putting pressure on Fisher. He has no way to defend himself. He has to hide behind his barrier, hide behind the walls. Look at how few ultimate charges he's built here. He's at 40%, did very little damage in that fight. It's the wraparound that's tricky that didn't catch the Mayhem, or the Mayhem didn't catch, rather. And it caught them off guard. Nice rotation. They've got ultimates now, though. EMP Barrage is a very powerful combo. Hailey's going to have to be on the spot here with the Transcendence. It may not be enough. That and that defense matrix. Ready to go for Michelle. Needs to make sure that mech is going to be staying very healthy. Fitz, though, gets himself cornered. Will be taken down. So suddenly, the Graviton Surge that was about to be up at 4% is not going to be in a fight. Straight in over top. Drops him a little bit there. Does fake EMP now going to be coming through. Four members going to be hacked out, including Michelle. Barrage coming in, but Zephyr unable to find any kills as Highly does manage to get the Transcendence off and keep everybody alive. Fitz will rejoin too, very shortly. Dueling inside the building, that's going to be the self destruct having to be used by Michelle. He tries to stay alive, gets a kill on Byram, makes it back into the mech. And Fitz is back now. Just Liver swing around. MVP. Rez comes through though, Chris puts Byram straight back into the fight, but Florida, the kind of scattered, not really unified here at the moment. A kill there on the Fitz would have been quite nice as he still does have that Graviton Surge ready to go. Up on the high ground here is Saya player. Not too many people who can threaten him at the moment. A little over halfway on this point so far. Saya player under some pressure. The pocket comes through. Chris managing to keep him alive for the moment. Now just looking for a target. These heads seemingly just evading him. Can't quite line up the crosshair. This is such a beautiful defense from Dynasty. They're everywhere they need to be. Oh, but now Fisher, he gets sent in for a swim. And just like that, it might just unravel. Fitz manages to find Byram. He's still holding on to the grab. They wouldn't have the Transcendence in the fight to try to stay alive. I think it back a little bit more as Zephyr gets taken down. Michelle gonna be eliminated. Rez gonna be there. Transcendence used by Hylie. And now BQP has a very big opportunity. He's trying to get in here and shut things down if he can catch Toby. Toby can get onto the point. He's got a sound barrier, but there's just no way they can hold it anymore. 
Fitz held the grab the entire time, and it's such a catch-22 problem when you're the Zarya in this case, because you want to use the grab to try to defend, but you're zoned out by Zephyrus Farah. You can't get back to the point easily. If you use the grab to try to stall and it fails, you won't have it for the defense. You know you've already gotten the better time bank. Best case scenario, Florida Mayhem's looking at a 320-ish time bank here. That's best case scenario. You've already matched or bettered that by two minutes. So hold your ultimates, wait, and try to get the most value out of that. Eliminate the time bank further. BQB just going on a little bit of a scouting mission. Pushes into this left side from the Fender's perspective. Throws down that EMP and Fisher that far forward. It's melted instantly. Toby managed to get the beat off. Now going to be hacked out. Nobody else going down on the side of the Soul Dynasty here for now. Florida Mayhem. Are pushed forward onto the point though, trying to find this cap. Toby gonna be taken down. Side player opens things up a little bit more here for them. Grab comes in from Fitz though. Transcendence is out from Byram. Charge in, managed to find Fate, takes him off to the side, but Fisher now isolating himself. Has to try to retreat out from the back. The Shatter gonna be coming down, unable to find anything. A little bit lackluster from Fisher today as far as those Ryan ults are concerned. Bomb thrown in, catches him in the hallway. Beautiful timing there on the translocator. BQB keeps himself safe, jumps back in, and nearly has another EMP ready to go. No ticks gained for Florida Mayhem, but still fairly entrenched on the point. Good spot for the Mayhem if they get this EMP ready. They need this win now. Now they're gonna be coming out EMP, manages to catch four here again. Fisher gonna be melted down. Byram coming up with a kill. Jason at the back, looking for a kill on the Fitz. The bubbles up as high energy managed to stay alive, and Michelle stays in the back with a sliver of HP. Grab's gonna be coming in. Lobbed in over onto the side, managed to find Fletta by himself with a shield is raised. He stays safe, and in all of the chaos, Pitts Pitts picks off Sion player and builds up a Graviton Surge again. Grab coming in now. Transcendence gonna be expiring. Heal the Knight coming out, but the beat is perfectly timed from Chris, trying to keep them alive. Hammer gonna be dropped from Fate, unable to find any kills in the back of that one. BQB is actually gonna be taken down. So nothing picked up on point B despite the highly elongated fight. Florida Mayhem gonna be held off again. This is exactly what Soul Dynasty wants. They're able to delay so well, stagger their ultimates. Toby will probably swap back to Lucio. There he is. And you've got now a minefield to delay, and you should be able to build another Graviton Surge. Your biggest concern is gonna be the ensuing EMP grab, where you don't have support ultimates ready. Toby just swapped. He's now back on the Lucio after his previous sound barrier nearly saved uh, Fisher when he was up there on the Rhine. The minefield is going to have to do some serious work here for Soul Dynasty if they're going to want to hold this. The rally will give them the longer fight advantage. The great place to use it, right in the choke. Yeah, minefield is going to be coming in, completely denies them access from this side of the map. So just rerouting them. She says, all right, my work here is done. I'll go back over on to Reinhardt now. Exactly. Now and he's not far behind. BQB's EMP needs to be magical. It needs to be a big one. They need to get a kill immediately. Rally coming out from Fletta. Grab online. Oh no! A major whiff coming through from Zephyr. Right there at the top of the stairs, but no one from Soul Dynasty was there to catch it. It just hits the ground, much like BQB just now as Fisher swings a hammer, manages to find that kill. Zephyr trying to redeem himself after the botched ultimate. Let's push forward, manages to take down the main tank of the Soul Dynasty, but they need so much more than that if they want to get this cap on 100 the energy for Flat or for Fitz, excuse me. And when you look at an EMP like that, it you could feel the frustration when you see it because you know the grab is whipped, you know the fight is lost, you EMP anyways, you get nothing for it. And you're playing for a time bank that you're not gonna get. You should be playing for the next fight, so you can hope to even finish the map at all. And I don't think it's going to happen here, not without the EMP that BKB just used. No Graviton left either. Fitz still high energy, still has his Graviton. They've got a trance. What are your options here for the Florida Mayhem? Not a whole lot. I mean, Fate's got to hit the fattest shatter that you've ever seen in your life. And even then, Hylie is waiting with that transcendence. Grab comes out from Fisher. He's looking to shut it down right here, right now. As we get ready to dip in under 20 seconds, Chris and Sia player are both going to be picked off. Fate still playing forward, but batted over into the corner. The hammer comes down. But Fitz finishes him off. That's going to be the cleanup coming through with 12 seconds remaining. Florida Mayhem, they are out of options. They're out of tools and ultimates to try to engineer a cap here on point B. Fitz just trying to track down BQB. Finds sure him. Well, going for that charge. Does not manage to get the tag over time. Going to be taken away. Side player pushes up with the rally rolling by himself trying to delay for a little bit longer. Michelle gets knocked into the mech, dumps that self-destruct. Just to get back in and rejoin with the rest of the squad who are fighting in the hallway. Jump into the back, comes through from Chris, keeping things contested here for the moment, while the rest of the Dynasty, they're charging forward to finish off the members of the Florida Mayhem. They will get the kills, they will move up 2-0. Very convincing play here. 
from this six-man roster. Hailey's in here, Fleta is back, and it's domination. Let's not judge this roster too quickly, though, because the series is not over, and this is against the Florida Mayhem. And we'll see what Soul has in store for us going forward into Stage 3 and the rest of this match. Well, 2-0 up, one more to close out the series here for Soul. Let's see if they can do it on the other side of halftime. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T-Mobile. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dynasty are looking to start stage three off on a high note. And so far, it's looking pretty good for Seoul. They're up 2-0 over the mayhem at the break. Welcome back into the Blizzard Arena, everybody. It's Puckett. I've got Zoe. I've got Sideshow with me. You know their faces. But today, in our second match, we got three new faces. Exactly, and uh, one of them actually had quite a debut, and that is Hailey from the Seoul Dynasty. He played exceptionally well on that send roll. Of course, his team also really enabled it, and not only did he perform really, really well in his first ever match, we also saw some uh, faces which we haven't seen in some time. Fleta didn't play a single game in stage two, and Fisher only uh, actually took to the stage for one single match. So it was great to see them also being thrown back into the mix. Now, I'm not sure if this is a, a case of them not receiving Expecting the mayhem, thinking they can get away with any kind of roster? Yeah, I think that seems like the most likely outcome to me. Here you can see Hailey versus another new face. We haven't seen Byron be feeded yet, a former player from NRG, picked up by the Florida Mayhem. He didn't have such a great showing opening out here, but of course the Florida Mayhem lost. You would expect his stats to be worse, but I was very impressed just by what I saw coming out from Hailey, whereas Byron seemed like he didn't really have that much impact in the back line of the Florida Mayhem. They've still got a, a couple of things to work on. And overall, the Mayhem don't look that different to what we were uh, what we've seen from them throughout stage one and stage two. The, the team is making changes, but this is a different roster. They've got Fate now from the LA Valiant, yep. who is that leadership figure that we were hoping for a little bit of kind of direction from. And instead, we just saw him kind of playing pretty passive. He was getting knocked back a lot, a lot of pressure on his shield, not really going for plays as much, getting forced out, getting pressured out. It seemed like they were relying on the Sombra a little bit, but that went wrong towards the end of the match as well. Yeah, I feel like Fate really wasn't able to activate to his full potential either because BQB, normally your Zarya, he's been running that Sombra. You saw Zephyr running the Zarya, and he has not been at the top of his game so far today. But overall, this Soul Squad is looking great. They're 7-7 seven seven overall, 
And this team is in a position to jump into the top 10 with a win today. So keep your eyes on this team in the second half. For now, though, I want to check in with the Florida Mayhem. We have the assistant GM, Scott Tester, in the building right now with Danny Lim. Thanks, Pocky. What is up, everybody? I am here with Bear Hands from Florida Mayhem. Hopefully you had a good break. And during the stage break, I heard that Florida Mayhem went through some uh, roster changes. Can you briefly tell us what, went, what kind of changes you guys made? And also, what do these new players bring to Florida Mayhem? Yeah, we were definitely busy during the break. Uh, as you can see, we added Fate and Byram to our roster. That's kind of the first step in uh, revitalizing our front and back lines, respectively. Um, and I think Fate specifically brings a lot of leadership and experience to the team. Um, from his time with Valiant and Immortals and also the South Korea World Cup team. Byron and Fate. So how are these new players uh, settling in right now for like Team Dynamics? Are they comfortable right now or are they still in the process of, you know, just settling in? Yeah, I think we maybe have a little bit of nerves coming into today, but we hope to calm down during halftime and throughout the rest of the stage. And I feel like uh, Float of Mayhem is going through a lot of roster changes throughout the whole season. Um, is this the newest change? Is this it? Is this the last one or are there more coming? Can you sort of Tell us what's going on in the future for Florida Mayo. Sure, this is definitely the beginning of our revitalization process, and there's going to be uh, some more additions to our roster coming real soon. Exciting. All righty. Okay, back to you. As always, is Scott Tester, a very smart man who has been around the esports block for a while. Mayhem, they're not out of this one yet, but are you guys both going with the Soul 4 0 here? Yeah, you you have to go with Soul here. Mayhem just looked very scrappy. Uh, the communication just wasn't quiet there, and overall, it, it just didn't it didn't really mesh just yet. I would agree. Even with the strongest uh, jersey upgrade in the entirety of the True. league, the Florida Mayhem I don't think are going to be able to take this one. But it's it's comforting to note that they are making changes as the bottom team in the league at the moment, and they have a direction moving forward. So over the course of the next couple of weeks, you might see something. Josh, last question for you real quick here. If you're a Florida fan, you're looking at the second half, you want to focus on some positives, what should the fans be scouting for? They need to be looking at BQB. I think they want to be working around this Sombra, and so the idea for them is to be making sure that this Sombra actually has effect. Towards the end of that final map, we saw EMPs just used all over the place. The ultimate economy not working out for them. So they've got to be cleaner with that Sombra Goats. All right, get a little bit cleaner in the second half. If you want a chance for the mayhem, we'll find out. Can Soul close it out? They need just one more after the break. So one of the biggest challenges at the beginning was like to understand each other in game. That was like really tough for me at the beginning because my English was like really poor. Talking about strategy was kind of tough. Most of the callouts in game were fine. Was that everybody knows even though you are not really comfortable in English, like left, right. Forward, backward, back, behind, that's easy. But when you got like really get going deep in strategy, it's kind of tough.
The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T-Mobile. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are halfway through our series, Soul Dynasty, currently leading 2-0 after that, a monstrous victory on Paris, but we still have more Overwatch to be played. An opportunity for the Florida Mayhem to try to turn things around, get some map wins on the board. Yeah, you know, I don't really agree with what Saichu said uh, on the halftime show about Soul using this just because it's Florida either. I really do feel like they're just creating more depth with different rosters. Everyone said it's the B team when Marvel was being run, and then that became their main roster later after using it basically exclusively on control. So I think Soul's got a lot bigger plans for this roster, and I'm excited to see how that all fleshes out. We will see Hagopin come back in for Byram here. Yeah, I mean, we had that stack comparison coming through. I mean, overall, the healing and the damage was pretty close, but the kills and the deaths is really where they were separated as far as those twos and Yadis are highly kind of getting the better of him. So we'll be taking a step back and Hagopun, the veteran, will be coming in to try to lead the charge here a bit more for the Florida Mayhem to try to turn this series around, put some wins on the board and maybe extend us to that map five. Hollywood coming up for hybrid. This is historically one of Hylie's better maps as well, especially on A, uh, you know, where the Zinyata matchup for the attackers and defenders is huge. If the attacking team Zenyatta gets trans first, there's so many things you could do with that. You know, you could approach with it, you could win the longer fight with it. And you usually know when you're the Zen versus the other Zen with all the callouts and the ult tracking, who's going to get that first. Hylie's been very successful on this map in the past in Contenders Korea because of his, you know, what we were talking about earlier on Oasis, his right clicks poking around corners to get kills. For the Mayhem, it's going to be Fate on the Rhine this time. Much more standard on Hollywood to run this than the Winston. Push it forward, Dynasty here on the attack. Initially, just gonna be changing things up a little bit. Seems like Michelle wants to run a little bit of Sombra here. For those who, you know, watch the New York game, you'll remember Michelle's success with Sombra on this map in the stage one playoffs where they were able to defeat New York Excelsior with a hack on the trance and all that. But one of Michelle's better maps for Sombra. Oh, into the back. Pushing forward, Chris, taking a bit of damage. He tries to contest Michelle. He's gonna be all right here for the moment. Has that Harmony Orb coming up from Hylia to keep himself sustained in the back lines. Good angles coming through here for the Dynasty. Starts ticking up, just trying to draw them off that high ground. Yeah, Zephyr's playing with fire with his flanking position right now, but it's actually working out really well for them. I mean, they, they have no way to dra drag them down unless the entire team gets onto the point, because yeah. no Diva to push them off. And Zephyr's cutting off the path here from this choke, and he's actually built you know, a decent amount of ult charge while doing so. Slowly take that one up. Bitch just trying to lob in those right clicks. Is surpassing BQB by about 20% here at the moment, so. Grab will be online sooner for the Soul Dynasty. Now the fight's starting to break out. Fish are going to be pushed over into the side. Get up for the moment. Down below half HP as they try to keep him alive. Shell manages to get the EMP ready to go in the meantime. Zephyr nearly knocked out of that mech. Will be. And that's going to be a hack on a pretty much everybody on the side of the floor of Mayhem as now Dynasty just looks for the cleanup in the cap. Hagopin not in position to use Transcendence to counter the EMP. Not to say that the Transcendence would have necessarily been enough, but it is the standard response versus an EMP like this one. And to get all six caught, that's normally when you see someone give up a fight on streets phase between, you know, A and B or B and C, where you know it's a lost fight versus EMP. You don't want to waste your support ults because you know the grab is coming up. In this case, I feel like it would have been better to try to use it, try to spin the fight, get a kill, or at least force the trade on Transcendence as with Ailey. But he got caught, so they didn't have any choices to make there. Just simply given the point up, and Soul wins it with one ult. And now they swap back to D.Va. And now they can really only rely uh, on that Transcendence, holding on to that one. As they wait for Fitz to use the Graviton Surge. Fortunately for them, the swap has come through. So D.Va on either side, and Michelle, oh man, straight back over onto the D.Va. Immediately gobbles up BQB's Graviton Surge. Just takes that one away. And the card will continue to roll. Hago put caught out. Oh, 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 oh. oh, that is so egregious. He's trying to block oh, Fitz, but it's not going to work. Going to block him in. Yeah, now the beat's going to be coming down. Fate juggled into the side room. Let's have the rest of the team here in front of back. Up, Prince Santa's going to be coming in from Hiley. Grab comes through. Fitz catching him on the side. Zephyr going to be popped out. They push forward indoors. 
to try to clean up the rest of this team. Fate manages to come away with one kill on the flood up, but he himself will get taken down and Fitz barely survives that duel with EQB. The team kill comes through and Soul Dynasty keep cruising through the second phase of Hollywood. That transcends from Hagopin, a big issue there. Very greedy. Hagopin's a very emotional player. And, you know, in situations like this, sometimes you want to try to, to make the big play, get the trance out early, try to get that block, but, you know, it costs them big. He's halfway to another one, but look at all the pushing power that Soul has right now. Yeah. The Josh Wilkinson transcendence right there. <laughs> Certainly. Graviton Surge. Ready for BQB. Can he line this one up? Does Michelle take another one away from them? There's Alche Hoban doing a fantastic job of denying grabs in the first series of the day. Let's see if Michelle can try to match him here. Yeah. Steady on the defense right now for the Florida Mayhem. Not much energy here for BQB. Pops the bubble, goes very low. Grab coming out, a bit of a panic. Transcendence forward here from Hiley. Not early enough to keep Toby alive and in the fight. Hold on to see though, still looking to turn this one on its head and get the victory. Fitz manages to find one. Now Fleta gonna get picked off. Two members down. Several more maybe on the way here for this whole dynasty. Grab Another questionable trans. Bob off over the top, looking for the pick. Not gonna be able to find anything. Makes it back into the back safely, does Zephyr. Shatter coming out, knocks him to the ground as Fisher falls. Still a very scrappy fight coming through with Michelle finally getting knocked out of that mech. That will be the cleanup, that will be the hold. 0.96 meters away, Florida Mayhem finally gained control. A hindsight bias here makes it look like a good trance because it did win them the fight. They were able to stick to the point get those kills off the fact that the trance gave them that extra healing. If it failed though, it would have been super bad for the Florida Mayhem. So risky play for Hakapun again. This time it works out and it looks good. You know, when you look back at it now, very risky choice to make though, very critical ultimate to have. Fire strike through from Fisher, unable to find anything. Beat and Transcendence nearly online here for the Dynasty. Rally out from side player, leading the charge to go on the aggressive side of things here. We're sold back for the moment. The minute 25 remaining in the time bank. Back over onto the cart though. As that rally expires, the armor is starting to get stripped away here from the members of Mayhem. Who's out on that? We're still waiting for that sound barrier to come up from Chris. Dangerously close. Toby's going to manage to find his first. Props the beat. BQB taken down as the grab comes through. The damage is not going to be there without that Zarya. The front line completely decimated. Now Dynasty. They slip their way into the back line. They clean up the members of the Florida Mayhem again. Extended team kill as they roll into beat. 224 on the clock for the final stretch. I don't mind BQB's uh, grab there. He's going to get staggered, unfortunately. So will Fate. But I don't mind his grab so much because he traded for Hylie's Transcendence. Fitz is going to have his versus Hagopun's Trans because he built one after that one that saved them for B. So they know the matchups of Ultimates, and they're kind of winning those right now. Because they got Hylie's Trance, if they did not, I don't think that they would have a very great shot of holding here towards C around this corner. But now, they've got a good shot with this Trance from Hagopun. It's ready now versus Fitz. Drop down coming through from Fate, contests the cart. Around that first corner, Bob could be coming in from Zephyr, looking for a pick, throws that one into the back. But Fitz, Fitz says thank you very much for the energy. Bob that bubble stays alive, now the grab comes in in response. Even with that healing coming out from Hagopun, it's still gonna be Chris taken down. Now the Shatter in from Fisher, doesn't fight too much, but they will be able to pop Zephyr out of the mech and finish him off. We get that cart rolling again as the rest of Mayhem pulls back over towards the trailer. I don't feel like it was necessary for the Mayhem to engage like that. They used Zephyr's bomb as the initiation and everything's falling apart here. Yeah, Toby knocking Fate back into the rest of the team. They, they could have the kill. They could have played more passively. They could have played around the choke. They could have played reactionary around the transcends Hagopun had versus Fitz, but they gave Fitz the opportunity. They gave him the grab because there was a bomb out. He couldn't eat it. Fitz could grab wherever he wanted. Yep. It's a good reaction there from Fitz. Nearly has that next grab ready to go now. Lapping BQB. Rally going to be coming through. Side player up in the thick of things, swinging away. They managed to find a kill here on the Fisher. There's a the clock. Drops below 50 seconds remaining. Good time by here for the Mayhem. Getting rid of that enemy Reinhardt. Might just be able to hold them off here at the final stretch. Four ultimates about to be online for Florida. For Florida, they really need to try to force out the sport ultimates off the cart. Play aggressively here with the grab. Easier said than done, but they've got to try it. Grab is ready to go for BQB. Needs this one to land. If this gets taken away by Michelle, 
That could be it here for this push. Gives Soul Knight to the finish. Shatter gonna be coming down. Fate unable to find anything. Beat out from both sides. The rally's rolling for flat out. Crab comes through. Man to find Slime Player right up here into the front. The cart is still advancing. Are they not paying attention to this one? Tommy, he's just rolling in. He gets the move back. And he basically backdoors the cart. Everyone's focused on the crowd that only caught the brig. They were winning the fight. It's hard to collapse on Toby in that situation. He sees the opportunity, sits on the cart, and rolls it through. Not the greatest time bank. 4.2 seconds. But it's a result. time bank. It's a time bank, and that's all that matters. That it is. Let's go ahead and see what happens for Florida's attack when we come back for their half. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Florida Mayhem getting ready on stage to go on their attack here on Hollywood. Soul Dynasty barely scraping by a finish with time in the bank. 4.2 seconds at the end. So some really good time buying moments for Florida, but unable to stop them from finishing the map. Yeah, and it, it feels like all eyes are on Florida. So many expectations. They've changed the roster so many times, coming from last year into stage one, stage two, and now in stage three. They made these small improvements. And so everyone is always very scrutinizing of, you know, how well they're doing after these new additions. They've got fate, but they're still not looking dominant. They're still not having that much success. But it's okay, I think, to not look dominant on your first day having fate. Byram on the roster, Hawkman's back in, now here on this map. And they did bring Soul down to only 4.2 seconds. There is a world where they get a much better time bank here, but they're gonna have to make slightly better decisions with how they use their ultimates and how they engage in team fights. And that was the big issue there on the defense. A few more fights go slightly better, and they could prevent C. Well, they're going to be looking to do just that. Fate pushing forward. Sees Michelle over onto that left-hand side. So wrapping around through security. Going to be the full flank coming through, but instantly Soul Dynasty, they jump over into the cafe, trying to cut them off. Michelle's going to be spotting to try to identify which way they're going to be trying to come in. Looks like it will be the cafe fight. So pushing forward. She'll raise as they go ahead and feel back. Just not sure which way they can realistically go here. We're gonna have to take this route, but they eat a ton of fire strike damage for it. Gonna get up onto the corner here. Start ticking up onto the point. Fleta gonna be the one to drop down, start to contest. Now Fisher right up into the thick of things. Starts swinging away, but that's gonna be costing him his life. He gets taken down. Side player will be on the exchange as Fleta keeps that shield raised trying to survive. First hit gonna be snagged here by Mayhem. Getting ready to roll through. Don't quite have it yet. Now, as they say, that vote is ever going to be taken out of the back and eliminated. So maybe won't be able to get it at all. Just a really rough set of events here for Florida Mayhem. They didn't have the target selection after that first kill. BKB had perfect bubbles, but they couldn't get the follow-up kills. Straight back into it, waiting for Zephyr to rejoin. He's coming through the choke. He's here with the rest of the squad now, but Soul Dynasty reestablish their defensive stance. They go ahead and push up towards the choke. That we, back. we saw BKB hit perfect barriers. They went high energy. They got the pick on the Fisher, but they just couldn't target anybody else down. They were not moving as a group. They are now, but it might be too late. Soul's about to have their ults online. This is not going to be the fast cap they were looking for. 
Pusher in the backhand side. Dynasty very much aware of this. Pusher gets that Earth Shadow ready to go with that final fighter strike. Grab, deep grab, ready to go. It'll be a battle of these Divas more than likely to try to deny the Graviton Surge from either side. Don't think it a bit of damage there. Into the back side. Let's get the grab coming through. Mitch to find Fisher. They charge him out into the back. They finish him off. BQB coming up with a kill. Rally's going to be out from Flutter. Now the beat going to be here from Chris. So they try to go ahead and get the cap onto A with Hylian getting taken down. Seems like Dynasty might just have to get this one over. They're going to cut their losses and back off. Re-engage here isn't realistic. It's a really nicely done pin there. You know, we've seen New York Excelsior love to do this. This go for the grab, you get the follow-up pin backwards. Vancouver as well. All the top teams are kind of emulating that style right now, and Florida Mayhem made it happen. Fate gets that kill. Soul Dynasty decides to hold ultimates rather than try to take a fight to win 20 seconds. They want to maintain as many ults as they can. They know they're behind in ultimates right now. The grab being the one advantage they have. Oh, speaking of which, gonna be thrown down straight here onto the card. Bob coming out from Michelle, looking for a pick. Managed to find Chris, but Zephyr fires back to get flat up. Now Finn's going to be taken down, BQB coming up with a kill onto that enemy Zarya. Charge coming through, and it's going to be the fight going the way of the Florida Mayhem. As they look to push this cart, Fisher going to be taken down here at the end as Zephyr scoops himself a double kill. Very lackluster engage there from Soul Dynasty. The grab comes out too early. They want to trade ultimates here. They know the time bank is the big, the big win for them, is how much can they deplete that. But it ends up being, you know, sure, at the end of the day, it's an ultless map. All 12 players are out of it, but... I feel like that could have been saved for a more pivotal moment. Played more passively. Well, for the side of the Dynasty, Hylian does manage to build up that next Transcendence ahead of BQB's Wrath. It's 13% away, though. Let's see if they can bait that out in some way. Trying to make sure that next Graviton Surge can really pop and allow them to get across the line here into B. 240 on the clock, so not looking too bad here on the Florida Mayhem on their attack. They don't need to get to the finish, but as much time as they can finish with is going to help them out that much more in those potential overtime rounds. BQB getting tagged up. Michelle. Michelle over onto the side. Healing oh, now. Grab opportunity. Let's get the grab coming through onto the card. Manages to catch about three. Charge coming in. Fate gets rid of Fleta. Suddenly no brick in the fight. Shatter coming down. Vince just goes ahead. Soaks that one up with the bubble, but the sun comes in from Sia Player rejoining. Knocks down Fisher. The front line continues to suffer here on the side of the Soul Dynasty. Michelle going to get cleaned up, and again, Florida Mayhem managed to push in. Four ultimates still help BQB about halfway to that grab with three and a half minutes left in the time bank. The strategy here again is to grab and pin and what looks like a U-turn, you know, I don't know, we don't have a name for this style yet. Maybe we'll start calling it U-turn. I've just thought of that right now, but it's working so well for them. They saw Michelle was out of position. They knew they had the free grab and they immediately, Fate is so ready to get that reverse charge so well executed. And now they've got a great timing here, potentially. Oh, the poop coming down. Zephyr was waiting around the corner. Manages to knock Soul Dynasty off that high ground. Shatter going to be coming in. This is a catch out. Two members of the beat's going to be coming in. Stacking support ultimates over the floor to Mayhem. This could bite them. In an extended fight, we'll have to see what happens. Now the grab's going to be coming in with the beat layered in for Soul Dynasty. Chris picked off. Bomb unable to find anything, but Hoggle put trades one back, eliminating Flet up. Fisher trying to stay alive. Will be taken down. Florida Mayhem will continue to advance. BQB's bubble usage on this map has been insane. He's constantly maintaining high energy. He's keeping the front line alive. He's working well with Fate to build that energy and also save him. That's why Fisher's dying first in a lot of these fights. 100 energy right now, and he's got the grab. This could be an amazing time bank for the Mayhem. Chunks it down to half HP. Wants to knock Michelle out of that back. If he can get it, grab the grab. Manages to catch them. The transcend is going to be used by Hylee. The bomb thrown in from Michelle. Looking for a pick to run it by some space, and Chris is going to be taken down. That's a good start for the Soul Dynasty, but it's still two minutes on the clock if they want to win this and close the series right now. Rally rolling for Saya player. Hakaput gets the Transcendence online. It has an Earth Shatter waiting for an opportunity as Michelle swoops his way through the team, but doesn't come up with any kills, and Fisher's going to be picked off again with that Earth Shatter ready to go. Grab it onto the card. Saya player falling low, but the shield is raised from Fate. He manages to stay alive, slings his way into the back. Fate under a little bit of pressure here, getting the heals coming through from his squad. And it's just a sink in the fight. Soul Dynasty trying to hold on. There's 0.78 meters left to go. The bomb is up from Zephyr. Stun out of that! Shatter is Fisher! Not gonna be able to get anything. The beat is rolling and fate will still crumble. 
Bomb buys him a little bit of space, and Michelle makes it back into the mech. So that will be the retreat coming in from Florida Mayhem. The Sire player gets picked off at the end. It was such a tunnel vision moment there for the Mayhem. They went for the bash onto Fisher to try to set up, not to block the Shadow, which was an extra bonus, but to set up for the bomb that Zephyr sent through. But it put them out of position, and when the bomb didn't connect, they were all way overextended, got picked as a result. Highly still holds another trance here. He's building these so quickly that this grab is no longer the tool they can have. And what looks like maybe a great time bank might actually be Soul Dynasty taking this series away from them. Yep, it's gonna be dwindled down. Let's see, Hunter if energy though. And finish this thing still looking. Decent for them here on this attack. The beat's gonna be coming through. Trance first. Under some pressure, manages to find the kill. The fire strike coming through. He stays alive. The shatter. Catching two members here into the back. And side player's gonna be taken down by the pin. Agopon unable to deny that pin away. With that transcendence rolling, he gets one. The cleanup comes through, and suddenly there's 35 seconds left in the time bank. It's all Fisher. That was all Fisher. Perfectly done by him. Gets the charge through. Maximizes damage in a very critical situation for the Soul Dynasty. He comes up big in the face of that grab. 100 energy and highly trancing early. He's almost got another one online, by the way. Now they've got all the tools to take the fight to the mayhem and close out this series. Nothing to take away this grab other than that defense matrix here from Zephyr. He nails this one, could be it. Throws it straight in on top of the Ryan Shield, back of the card, bomb into the back from Michelle. Unable to find any kills with the explosion. Overtime starting to tick away. Sire player inches forward. Gets attacked, keeps the overtime going. Fates barrier destroyed and he falls low. Has to peel back to get the Mega Pack. Shatter, Shatter comes two. in! And that's gonna be Fisher looking to put them down. No kills to come in yet for the beat to be rolling from Toby. They're still holding onto a transcendence. Soul Dynasty, they don't want overtime rounds. They want the series finished right here, right now. Fisher pushed into the corner. Going lower and lower, juggled around by the members of Florida Mayhem. The Graviton Church is going to be coming through, catching them off the cart. Bomb into the front from Zephyr, but they can't get rid of the shield. The boop comes in, Toby will be eliminated. Soul Dynasty still fighting tooth the nail to stop this one right here. Fisher falls down to about half HP, pulls back up the stairs. Continuing to roll forward. Can anyone tag the cart? They managed to do so. 0.85 meters left to go for the Florida Mayhem, who will not be finishing with any time in the bank if they can get this. So we'll have to hold them off. Try to hope for a draw. Michelle going to be popped out of the mech. Hagaput taken down. Toby swapped over onto the Ana. He's locking him in, looking for those healed and eyes. Bionate coming up now. Tosses it down, kills off the baby diva. Chris falls, the overtime plummets, and Soul Dynasty, they successfully hold here on Hollywood, and they close out the series with a 3 0. We will have that fourth map to play, but this roster is looking clean. Right now, to see Hailey on this stage, performing well, dominating versus Hagapun. It's gonna be a good look for Soul Dynasty with the schedule they have for stage three. A little shaky on that defense, but they get the victory nonetheless. One more map coming up, the new one, Havana. We'll see it when we come back from the break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T-Mobile.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. That might be it for the series. It is in the hands of the Soul Dynasty. They clinch it with a 3-0, but there's one more map to be played, and it's one that has never been before seen here on this stage. Havana, our newest map, Escort, going to be coming up next as we get ready to see if Florida Mayhem can play a single map win on the board. So I know a lot of you guys at home have played Havana, you know, in your ranked games. Also, when you played the, uh, you know, kind of single player mode. Well, not really single player. You can play with friends, but, you know, you do the story mission, right? PVE. Yeah, PVE. Uh, you guys have played it. You know what it looks like, but how it plays out in the pro scene, we don't know exactly yet how it is going to work. The cool thing about the map, though, is that it's got several different types of play style. And you kind of start in a very open area. You then go indoors with this high low ground. So you find a finish in a more middle grounded open area. But there's also a lot of chokes and corners to consider. So, you know, it feels like this map draws inspiration from a lot of existing Overwatch League maps and puts them all together. And that's what's super cool about it to me. Yeah, I mean, we have to see how this gets played. Uh, you know, really uncertain what these guys have prepared for it. They have known that this was going to be in stage three for quite some time. So we can expect that everybody has been grinding on Havana to try to get prepared for this moment. But uh, Mayhem and Soul Dynasty, they draw the straws. They get to go first. Yeah, it's going to be fun to see how they do it, too, because, you know, I think you could certainly run different compositions on this map. It doesn't certainly have to be the 3-3 three, three from start to finish. You're going to always be thinking about ult economy when you're swapping those. But I think more styles are viable. We will have illicit stepping in for the first time for Fleta. Yep. We'll be subbed in here, right at the last map, Dynasty. Otherwise, not making any changes. There's going to be Illicit coming in. So Fleta, back into the waiting room for him. His job is done. I want to get some play time for Illicit up here on the big stage. Illicit, very uh, much a projectile DPS player that was known for being subbed in for specific compositions back in the day. And that was when he was playing for Blossom. Uh, which is the team that, you know, GC Busan, they got their slot, same org, right, back from, for those who remember the Apex days. But anyway, Illicit, a player who's specialized in projectile DPS, Hanzo in particular, Bara, very good at that. And, you know, this is a map where, you know, if no one really knows exactly how it's optimized yet, you could have this player come in and play something unexpected and surprise people. Or you could just say, I'm up 3-0. I want to give Illicit some stage time today. We'll never know what the real reasoning is, but... Once we get into the map, I think we'll know. I think it's probably that. We'll see if they have anything super fun prepared for this new map. But, uh, you know, outside chance that he just ends up back onto the Brigitte, the Brigitte instead of playing those kind of namesake picks such as the Hanzo and the Far. But we'll see what they have for us. Florida Mayhem just looking to stem the bleeding a little bit as we try to get one map win here on the board. Obviously, nobody has any victories or losses here yet. Yeah. So this map plays very uh, different than any other escort map because of how open the start is. You could see how you can look down this choke point. It's not that narrow, though. It's very long. So you have a long line of sight attackers as the defenders and as the attackers. You're always going to be vulnerable as the attacker to the defenders, you know, range DPS as you come out of the gates. In terms of defense, we are going to see a bunker composition set up here for the Mayhem with the May variation. It's even going to be Sombra. So it's a very, uh, you know, map specific comp and it only has the one support of the Batiste so that's going to be necessary the immortality fields need to keep Hagapun alive. You can take the May out of the Florida May, uh, the, the Vic out of the Florida Mayhem rather but you can't take the May out of it it would seem so still gonna Mayhem be that. if you will. Ah uh, oh man that was that was <laughs> worse than me messing up my joke. <laughs> here we go Soul Dynasty looking to match as Illicit does go over onto the Hanzo. Just trying to figure out which way they want to shift around and get well, well the, onto that car. The Hanzo is considered one of the better counters to the bunker composition, so Illicit already expecting that they'd be running this coming out. You know, kind of what I was talking about before, you know, bringing the Hanzo specialist in. Immortality field used early here, so something to consider. Once that is gone, they have to reposition. Yeah, and the barrier is getting broken down. Michelle actually managing to find a hit there on a Saya player. Fitz jumping around the back, spots BQB for a moment, but he's not able to line up a shot on him. Except for playing forward here onto the cart for the moment. Trying to keep things contested. It's getting frustrated. Come on, peek me. Get a headshot. He's actually doing a great job of slowing this down while they get that next immortality field ready. That's going to be that half field coming through, and Hagapun just melts down Michelle. Looking for a bit more. Will be able to get Fitz. Fitz coming through, puts Tafara back into the fight. 
Agapun is very quickly approaching that configuration tank as he cleans up another kill now on a Fisher. And as silly as it looked to have Zephyr out there by himself, he did his job perfectly. He didn't oh, do yeah. a lot of damage, didn't build a blizzard, but he delayed long enough for them to get the setup there to toss out that amplification matrix and set up, uh, you know, the defensive setup they need. If they lose control of it even for a second, they're gonna have to change comps. They're gonna lose their ultimate, so they need to hold this as long as possible. And Zephyr did a great job of making sure they could make that happen. Here's the Dragon Strike coming through. Good angle. Yep, throws that one in. Argopun gonna be taken low, but that immortality field, of course, does come through to keep everybody topped up. Now the EMP out from BQB catches three. Big finishes off Fisher, and Hagapun pushes forward, looking for the snipe onto Hylie. Can't quite get that Zenyatta, but one kill over to the Mayhem is enough for them to win the fight. This is really scary when you don't get that many kills with the tank, though, because you got to rush back up to the top and get into position as soon as possible, because Soul is coming out of the gates quick. And, you know, the next step here for Soul Dynasty is going to be to look for a barrage setup here once the barrier is down. Zephyr caught. That wall comes up, though, keeps himself safe. Nades lobbed in from Chris. The right click does help keep him alive. A little bit of damage for a poison trap, but otherwise we'll be okay. Mortality field gonna be taken down. Zephyr eliminated at the cost of Elicit. The cart starts advancing. You can see the shift into the back now, just playing these corners, playing these street angles. Or the Florida Mayhem with this bunker. Another amp field gonna be coming in, but Hago put taken down. Michelle she manages to get the bastion with the rockets. That's massive. That's the majority of their damage gone. They could use the Blizzard to delay, but I think they might want to consider a composition change here, because they're not going to be able to get this setup done in time for A. That's exactly what they do. Hagapun onto the Ana now. No pushing forward. Well, Rocket's coming in. going to finish them off, but unable to find it for now. Blizzard going to be thrown down by Zephyr. Well, freeze. Nobody. As Fisher escapes, and Hylie has that transcendence rolling. But still a chance to contest here as Fate continues to push further forward with these barriers right up in front of the cart. A couple meters away from point A. Chris under some pressure goes low, has to use that immortality field. Good angle here for Michelle. He's just avoiding this barrier completely. Drags Fate out. Michelle sleep. comes in and side player manages to side the kill. Now comes another one on the high lane. Double kill coming through the EMP gonna be used. Hacks out too and Fate's gonna fall. Dragon Strike rolls out for the side of the Soul Dynasty. EMP there. Finds four on its soul. As they continue to trick back one and one here. Alyssa puts two on the board. Trying to scrape a victory. Trying to get into A. A triple kill. A quadra kill. Alyssa, he's in here on the Hanzo. You know, it makes sense for the map. Strong against Bunker. You know, they've probably had some experience playing against Bunker on this map. The figured fate Mayhem would try it. I mean, if you look at the architect of how architecture of how A is played and how wide open. You know, the expanse is where a Bastion can get value and, and how many chokes you can operate around with the uh, Orisa. You know, it's not a surprise that we would see it. Elicit comes in here on the Hanzo, does well, and now he's done his job and they can swap over to the Brigida. Yeah, Michelle just having some fun. Pops that Barrage right before swapping off. We'll be over onto the 3-3 now. QB up above. I'm trying to get an angle. Build up for that EMP. Looks like the high ground approach gonna be coming through for the Soul Dynasty. Work their way up here onto the walkways. Right. Mate still playing forward. The cart in the meantime, slowly advancing forward. That's not right. Trying to get it across this minor bridge. Michelle, Michelle gonna be lurking. playing that one. Pushes his way up onto the high ground. Mate going lower and lower. Not the highest energy here for Fitz, but still weakening the shield. But listen, will be taken down. That's gonna be the retreat coming through for the Soul Dynasty as they peel their way back to their side of the warehouse. All right, now the scary thing for Soul is that the EMP is about to be ready and it's so difficult to enter any of these choke points versus EMP because you're gonna be all clumped up. The supports are gonna to have to be at the back and highly can counter this if he's not caught. Here comes BQB, he's looking for the angle. Needs it online first, so yeah. comes back. Hack company coming through over on the Toby. Says that's not right. Let's build a wall ride. Translocator destroyed here, I believe. So, be coming down. EMP gonna be thrown in. That's gonna be five members caught. Highly is one of them. With no sound barrier. That's gonna be Fisher taken down. So, again, held at bay. Florida Mayhem looking very well prepared on Havana here so far. Need the translocator there to get that one off. And, you know, that's the ult they needed was that transcendence. 
now they're kind of put on the back foot here. Only 30 seconds to go. Still having to fight through these choke points, which is so difficult. It's going to be double grab coming through from either side. Transcendence is out for both these and Yadis. No one's going to fall yet. Standard 3-3 practices essentially coming through. BQB, the one lone member here, not on the 3-3 train, does start building up closer and closer to that next EMP. I think the, the Lucio uses the barrier second will probably win this fight. See how things are going to go down. Hack forward onto Hylie. He's going to be safe for now. Manages to stay alive. He'll be back here onto the low ground as the cart continues, continues to advance. Only halfway to be so far. BQB, the longer this fight goes, the closer he gets to an EMP. That could be their trump card. They left Michelle alone to force out the overtime. Somebody's going to tag in onto it. They barely managed to do so, but they jump straight in on top of that EMP. He'll be against the beat to try to keep them alive with the kills. Come in for Florida Mayhem. Cleaning up Soul Dynasty and holding them here halfway through the warehouse. When all you've got left is two sound bears, both teams know it, they don't want to use it. All you have to do is back off if you're the Mayhem because you know you're going to get an EMP. They don't have any tools to fight that they're going to come that are going to come online that quickly. So they back away, get the EMP, use it to initiate. Toby's barrier is ready, but it's not fast enough. The picks come through. Great setup here, great you know, knowledge of the map for the Floto Mayhem from start to finish, from bunker to controlling the chokes with the Sombra. And we'll see what Soul Dynasty has in store because I think it might look very similar as most of the time when new maps come out and everyone's trying to figure out how they're most optimized, you do see a lot of mimicking of what's the most successful. Well, looking good here on the new map. Florida Mayhem, can they get a successful attack and try to put that map win on the board, make it a 3-1 victory for the Dynasty, rather than suffer a 4-0. We'll see what they piece together for their attack. Could just try to run a bunker, get that Bastion set up on the cart, and advance from there. Dynasty, though, will just be running the 3-3 on defense. The 3-3 three, three is not a bad choice. You don't play around the, you know, windows where you can place a Bastion. You don't play around the, you know, this road right here, the street that is very easy to damage, uh, you know, send damage down straight in a line because there's no cover for the attacking team. They're just going to play very far forward, very aggressively here. Now, this could certainly backfire for Soul Dynasty if some of these players get picked early. I mean, look at how far they're playing forward. I mean, this is kind of nuts. I, you kind of think that they're expecting a bunker and they want to deny the setup onto the card. Scott's coming through Florida Mayhem, waiting patiently. Start pushing out. Now, Dynasty aware that it will just be the nearly mirrored matchup with BQB still over onto the Sombra. Yeah, it's it's a winning matchup for Mayhem in a lot of ways, especially with the spawn event. They need to get kills now. They get those hacks coming through. Fitz very aggressively pushing up right up to the spawn door. Side player going to be taking him down, which is going to be the exchange with the Brigitas. The shirt trading up a little bit as he does manage to finish off Chris. But the tank line, dangerously low, have to go ahead and peel their way back up the street a bit so they don't get picked off. When you look at the fact that Soul didn't get an even full map here and they were held so long on A, this ends up really hurting them because BQB gets an EMP off of this. The card is still rolling. They did not delay the same way that Florida Mayhem did. And as smart as it was, as you say, to try to deny, you know, what could have been a pirate ship, you know, Bastion setup, it does come back to bite them because it was not that setup. And BQB has got their greatest tool now nearly online. Let's see how they play around this one. BQB. He's got to get the heck out of there. Gets jumped on for the moment. EMP just going to be used. Shatter comes down. Fisher, but he gets stuck out of it, I believe. And now he's going to fall as does Toby. Michelle knocked out of the back. And that's just going to be a quick cleanup here for the Florida Mayhem as BQB continues to push forward and for some additional ult charge. But point A, likely just taken right now for Florida been, you know, whisperings that Florida was doing very well on this map leading up to this match, and it certainly shows they are looking so good on this. They're going to contest this one. Just over one meter away are Florida. Side player goes up into the front. Shatter coming down straight into the shield. The Fisher not going to be able to find anything. Is fake. Now the beat coming through. Soul Dynasty goes the on the attack. Hack on the Fisher means he can only left click. That's pretty much all he wants to do in this situation, though. Now the grab comes in from Vince. Catches out the Florida Mayhem. They can test right at the last second, and it pays off here for the Soul Dynasty. I think they had to do that. If they don't, and in the you know time bank comes through, BKB builds another EMP. You're looking at almost a one fight situation there for just winning the map. So you've got to take a risk there. You've got to look for that fight. If you lose it, you know it's same scenario. So if you win it, you have so much to gain. If you don't take the fight, you have very little. 
uh, to gain from that. So I like this choice. Expensive in terms of ults, though. A well, yeah, couple ults left here for the Soul Dynasty. One of them already going to be gone as Michelle. Unable to find any kills with that self-destruct. Fisher going to be pinned and taken down by Fate. BQB is still holding on to an EMP. Wants to hold it for the next phase as they try to get that finish here on Havana. That went on the board. Michelle up over top of them, trying to harass, trying to get rid of that soul prep. But instead, he's just going to get staggered a bit, taken down here on the back end. So of much, the fight. so much dis. Uh, I, I, this, there was not a clear focus there for Soul Dynasty. You know, on that they were looking at the shield bash on BQB, but there's no follow up damage. And Mayhem wins this fight basically for free. They get to keep the EMP, and this is amazing for them. Yep. The Dynasty. Not a lot of tools to shut that down right now. Hylie's about to have trance, but it's not going to have it in time unless they just sit here and wait. But that means the cart is rolling. He got caught by it last time. He needs to make sure that he stays safe. But given how open this top side is, oh, he's it's caught. not going to happen. Six member EMP comes in from BQB. Clean up. Will be there. Fate going to be taken down, but the kills very much going the way of Florida Mayhem as they continue their attack here. The cart slowly moving forward. Hylie using the transcendence. Nice to keep Michelle alive. Be able to do so. Fisher gonna be rejoining in momentarily. The cart continues to get closer and closer, rounding that final corner very swiftly. Gonna be another last second contest here for the Soul Dynasty. Let's see if it works out for him this time. Lobbed in from downtown is the grab fit. This is to catch the majority of members of the Florida Mayhem, but Agapun has the transcendence ready to roll, keeps them alive, and Fisher is getting taken lower and lower. Responding grab now in from Zephyr. Pitches them along the wall, but the kill's still not gonna be there for Florida. Two and a half minutes remaining on the clock, however, for them, things still looking rather good on this defense. The bomb from Michelle, unable to find anything. The hack coming in. Seth going to be taken down. Toby finds that kill. The beat comes in. Another EMP, oh, no. though, gets rid of the shielding, but they still manage to win the fight. It's, it's such an awful fight for Florida Mayhem. Why commit ultimates here? You're 20% away as soon as from they lost EMP. Zephyr, it should have been it. You had 20% away from an EMP. You hold your ults. You've got two minutes. You've got the next fight won. Look at Soul Dynasty's ults. They have very few. Now they've got the trance ready, sure. But if you wait for that next fight, you've got so much more opportunity to use your ults together than the last cherry on top of how discoordinated that fight was, was the EMP from BQB. It's so late. There's no place oh, in boy. that fight. They lost all the advantages they had. Oh, no. I, seems like communication breakdowns in this final map from both sides. Dynasty looking a little bit... Uh, you know, like they were falling apart before that fight. Now Mayhem's turn. Fate drops off the high ground, has to wrap back around to get up there with the rest of his team. Hang on, guys. Wait for me. I'm almost there. But ults are coming online for both sides. And there's no telling how it's going to go. Grab lobbed it again from Fitz. Going to beat them down with the Transcendence. It's down from Hagaput. Keeps them all topped up here for the moment. Highly going to be stuck. Transcendence comes in. They're unable to kill him before he can use the ultimate. Fate juggled over to the side. Going to be eliminated. Toby comes up with a kill. And Mayhem, they have to get the heck out of there. Now suddenly one minute remaining is BQB. Barely manages to translocate with his life intact. Yeah, if he dies here on his way out, then we wish he would have died earlier, but he does survive. They will have the opportunity to take the EMP grab fight. There's no support ultimates here. So Florida still have a really good shot of taking this map. They have a massive advantage here for this next fight. So Dynasty are going to have to respect the EMP, but there's no support else to counter. They're going to have to spread to make sure it has less impact. Which you can see they're doing right now. Michelle trying to see if he can grab that Graviton Surge, but he's pushed away. This is everything for Soul. Last chance. Gonna be held for the moment. Zephyr still waiting. Bubble forward on the fate, trying to keep himself. Pushes forward, throws it down into the back of the wall, catches several members. Now the EMP comes in. That's gonna be five. Two kills instantly for the side of the Florida Mayhem. Haven't lost anybody yet. And they're gonna make sure that they don't as the beat comes in. Shell uses the bomb and lands on top of the cart. He will be able to make it back into the mech safely. The Fisher's now taken down. Toby nearly with a beat of his own online will be eliminated. The cleanup is coming through as Florida looks to put a map on the board. Highly just trying to buy a little bit more time. But it doesn't really matter as soon as the transcendence expires. It might just be it. Bubble grab forward is good, though. Down the grab, the grab is good, is good though. Gonna be taken out. The gonna be taken out. The gonna be going down. The beat comes in. Dynasty, can they actually do it? No way. Toby, he gets the right click against all odds. They look to turn this one around. The shatter comes through. Zephyr trying to beam them down. He'll get knocked up into the air. The OT plummets away. And oh my god, Dynasty.
They turn it on its head. They make me look like a fool. They complete the defense here on Havana, and they get the 4-0. You know what they say, Achilles? It's never over until it's over. You see the trance come out from Hailey. He buys time. They've got bits on the high ground. He's got a graviton surge. It hits everyone. Florida Mayhem hands off the keyboard. Everyone on the point. They're all locked up in the grab. He gets the high energy there, does massive damage. What a crazy comeback there for the Soul Dynasty. Hailey just sits on the cart and everyone comes in hard. Absolutely unreal. If that's what happens when I'm wrong, I don't want to be right again. Dynasty coming up with one of the most clutch defenses that we have ever seen. Incredible new look for Soul Dynasty with Hailey, Illicit. This team just gets scarier and scarier, more diverse more six-man rosters and for the florida mayhem you know it was a tough loss to take they looked clearly prepared on havana at least but we're still back at the drawing board it feels like yeah a little roughness there from the dynasty but overall good stuff they get the floors here but guys let's go ahead and throw down to danny Lim, who's on the floor with fisher wolf and Achilles, thank you very much what is up everybody i am here with fisher from seoul dynasty make some noise everybody yeah great job fisher we all missed you good to see you back on stage now Soul Dynasty seems to be one of the teams that make a lot of changes in their starting uh, roster. And um, I just want to ask, how do you guys decide who plays when between you and Marvel? 네, Marvel 선수와 피저 선수 중에 좀 어, 스타팅 로스를 많이 변경을 하는 게 서울 팀이 아닌가 싶습니다. 어, 어떻게 좀 그런 변경을 어, 얘기를 하고 어떻게 또 경기를 뛰시게 되시는지 궁금하네요. 일단은 저와 마블의 스타일 차이도 있을 거고 일단 그런 걸 판단하는 거는 저희 이제 보드진 코치나 감독님께서 저를 제가 뜰지 이제 마블이 뜰지를 선택하기 때문에 그건 이제 어떤 기준을 줬다고는 말씀드릴 수 없습니다. 전략이기 때문에. 네. So it's part of a strategy. So I can't get into uh, too much detail, but we do both Marvel and I have a very di uh, different uh, play style. So it is really up to the coaches and the staff to decide uh, who would be the better fit for the match that we're in, and they decide and they think about it, and then they decide whether I play or Marvel plays. Okay. Well, um, another question. I feel like we're about halfway into the season and um, Marvel has more playtime on stage compared to you. Does that bother you at all? Is that, um, does that make it difficult for you uh, playing for Soul Dynasty at all? 좀 어, 어떻게 보면은 마블 선수와 좀 비교를 했을 때 어, 솔직히 마블 선수가 조금 더 경기를 많이 쪘잖아요. 또 지금까지는 어, 피자 선수가 보셨을 땐 그게 좀 영향을 미친다고 생각하시나요? 좀 이렇게 좀 힘든가요? 그게? 아무래도 저도 프로 게이머다 보니까 저도 경기를 뛰고 싶은 마음이 강하지만은 뭐 팀을 위해서 제가 뛰든 누가 뛰든 어쨌든 결국에는 팀을 위한 그런 선택이라고 생각하고 있기 때문에 따, 뭐 딱히 의구심을 가진 적은 없어요. 근데 아무래도 경기를 못 뛰니까 좀 힘들긴 하네요. Uh, I'm gonna be honest. So uh, because I am a pro player um, and because I am not getting to play often on stage, it does bother me. It doesn't bother me, but it is a little bit difficult for me. Difficult for me. But um, I know that. The team is doing that for the benefit, greater benefit of the team, and they are making all the right decisions. So I don't doubt their decisions. But short answer, yes, it does affect me a little bit. Well, Fisher, I feel like we all wish that you could play it more often, and I'm going. To, I'm pretty sure that you're going to be playing more often. 조금 더 어, 피셔 선수 좀더 자주 봤으면 좋겠네요. Alrighty, thank you so much. Well, final kill us. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Danny. Good to hear from Fisher. Good to see that he, you know, he's still chinning up despite the fact that he hasn't really been that present on the stage as of late. Taking a look at the strength of schedule, though, Dynasty ranking in there looking pretty good as far as their odds of making it back into the playoffs uh, for this stage. Fourth easiest strength of schedule going into stage three. And, you know, with this dominant 4-0 and all their new players they brought into this roster, I do really feel like this could be the stage that pushes them back towards playoffs. I'm talking about season playoffs, and maybe they'll have another run of it in the stage three playoffs themselves. They looked great in stage one. Yeah, that they did. I mean, we might have a lot of first timers moving forward into the season playoffs. Shanghai Dragons as well, looking uh, very, very good this season. But uh, Seoul Dynasty, they come back in stage three, they get that win. But guys, let's figure out who our player of the match is presented by Omen by HP, as always. And it's gonna be highly comes out for his first series on the stage and uh that's man. his first kill too knocks chris off the wall he's had several good trances as well in this series some of them a little bit risky but they did pay off and on top of it all his decision making on when to hold trance when to use it to make sure that soul always had the ult advantage was what was really impressive caught by emp a few times but I think we can let that go because his performance individually compared to the rest of the squad 
I think he was definitely the biggest standout and it was his first match ever. He was also the one who made the call to jump on the card in the last second, which led to their victory on the fourth map. Yeah, got that, and also only died eight times. For his first time on the stage, coming up with 74 eliminations as well, uh, with 23 final blows. A very fantastic start to his career here on the big stage, highly fantastically done. Looking forward to seeing more of this guy and more of the changes coming through from Soul Dynasty, because clearly they're kind of able to put pieces in and out, Illicit coming through. We got to see the quadra kill on his Han, so, so some fantastic stuff coming through. But guys, we're just halfway done with the day. We're still, we still have more Overwatch coming up. We got Guangzhou going up against Chengdu, so make sure you stay tuned. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Toyota, official North American partner of the Overwatch League. Toyota, let's go places. Hey, man, what's up? You need anything for today? Nah, man, I think I'm set. Big day today, man? Yeah, huge. Let's play some Overwatch.